But we're jamming out here in the studio, and five randoms, they're jamming out on map number one, Waters Gate, a seven-point Waters Gate. Goes the way of five randoms. Gormizer, we, we got our kind of first look. So much of the spunky DPS conversation yeah. was had. What are your initial impressions? It didn't hit the way I think he <laughs> wanted it to, but I will give him credit. Yes. He was the one that was maybe the most susceptible yes. throughout that entire fight. So it's not too surprising to see him get picked on as the Leon. The thing that actually caught my eye, specifically, first off, it's, it's important to see five randoms get 3-1 and then kind of trip along the way That's to right. getting that victory. But it was Nepo on the other side, right? There mm -hmm. was just a lot of control against Spunky. And I feel like Nepo had a great game on that Vivian. I feel like it opened up so many avenues for his team to come back to the point where they did. Granted, they didn't win it. It was still just enough to help lock down the Leon, as well as open up a lot of doors against specifically Xentra and Zarini. I mean, he was 18, 7, and 18. Yeah. He was doing a lot of work. Well, 11 seems to be the important number to look at for five randoms, four members with 11 deaths. And kind of in an interesting role swap. Jeez, look at Spunky's damage. We've talked about Spunky, right? Top of the damage charts for his team, nearly the top in the game. And with how much he was focused, I think that's pretty impressive above anything else. Uh, but between Zarini and Nixentra, I mean, we have seen some flexibility out of Zarini uh, in the past. Yeah. But, you know, primarily he's playing the, the Barracks, the Inaras, things like that. And now we're seeing a bit of a flex from him as well under the Ruckus. And it fit pretty well into it. I mean, and that's one of the things I think that, that has almost always come well in Europe specifically. Sure. Europe, save for a few people in North America, they just have good Ruckuses all around. Yeah. Like almost every single one of them could be put in a conversation for top 10 Ruckuses in the world. Mm -hmm. Then you're also going to have to throw in, you know, people like Rubu and places like that places like that, people like that, and <laughs> keep that conversation going. But there were a lot of turning points, specifically that ultimate uh, you, yes. you can see there, where he was just shotgun blasting. He barrel stuff to Hexafire, and w when you do something like that, no one's going to survive. Well, there was some, some great setup in that game. Kresnik was kind of taken aback. I mean, it was a Dread Serpent into like a, a yeah. inch-perfect Hexafire. Just Have melts fun dealing away. with yeah, that right. That is a perfect storm, and it played out perfectly there for five randoms. Uh, Buck was a big conversation piece that we had as well. It was last pick there towards the end of the last mm -hmm. pick and ban phase. Did you like what you saw out of the Buck? And it, he was huge in the beginning. You brought it up, And right? I actually think that's one of the biggest things is, like, early on, Ninu is the reason that team is doing anything. Like, yeah. Granted, you have some performance coming down from everyone else, but Ninu is just making everything work. He was the engine kind of pushing things forward. And then slowly you saw the power curve. Like, he started up at the top and just kind of dwindled down. And didn't right. ever become like, oh, you can ignore the buck. But it stopped being as pertinent to focus him down and, and to just deal with him. You could start opening up to looking at Zarini, to looking at Exentra, and dealing with them mm -hmm. in different ways because that buck stopped hitting quite as hard. And, and you know, the, the kind of self-sustained buck power curve, you know, once yeah. some of those later cauterizers come online... Maybe not quite as survivable. Picks and bans for game number two about to come on your screen. And I'm excited to to see maybe where Ninu pivots because we, he had the buck in game one. I know that Eevee is a big blaster choice for him as well. I think he has so much flexibility, and I'm excited to see. We didn't get to see it in week one, but now here in week two, if this set goes long, yeah. He, there's a world where he maybe plays a different champ in every game. If they grab the king a big Leon for Spunky. Sure. and try to like get some of the hit scan presence off the board. I wouldn't be too surprised to maybe see him even go for something like a Drogo's on this map. Sure. It just depends on what they're going to be going up against. That's probably the the biggest like star next to it just to make sure if that comes through it's a like last pick, hey, we can make this work here. His Drogo's is disgustingly good. It and is. so five randoms especially on this kind of map against a bomb king who's already going to be controlling the inside. Don't contest them there. Fight where he's not going to be. Go outside the point. Well, another early ruckus pick here uh, for Chroma Space for Chroma Space this time rather than five randoms. Ying for the first time in the set. We thought that Bolka might pivot onto that Ying at some point. You get two more healer bands. You like them reaching for Ying with their first pick? Yeah, I think it fits. Again, when you look at Fury and Genos, you have to go down a list in your head of, okay, what's still available and what's still good that I can pick up? Yep. Ying, perfect for team fights. Does similar things to an Inflame. It's not going to come banners. through and be like, oh, hey, we do so much damage and move forever now. It's just, cool, now we're not going to die for a little while. But that is so helpful. I mean, three seconds even, especially early game, where you're just healing for as much as that is happening. Yingle is one of the biggest pivots in the game yep. for who can win a fight. 
Yeah, sudden burst deal, and you get a little of that I with Grover as well. Yeah. Uh, Terminus no, and Zinn on the other side. We've seen Zinn picked up a good bit. Uh, Terminus, quick thoughts. Not super used to seeing him here. Yeah, this is not necessarily the number one map. Ice Mines is kind of sure. taking that for him. But I feel like, again, there's a spot in the meta for him. It's just figuring out where it goes. This is another map in a, a similar vein to Ice Mines. I feel like he could play on the point pretty well here. Has cover from both sides as well from in front. Power Siphon's going to be good. He should be charging it pretty often. I'm excited to jump back into this one. Five randoms take game one. Chroma Space looking to tie this one up in game two. Finch and Kresnik take it away. Thank you, Dave and Gormizer on the desk. I guess more on sort of a cab set over there. You guys look like you're having a good time. It's Finch and Kresnik that are going to be taking it into the call for game number two. And Kresnik, after having taken a look at the picks and band, after how game one shook down with, yeah. with five randos being controlled and losing it for a bit and grabbing it back, what do you what do you what are your eyes really kind of zooming in on here in the game two? Well, first Spunky not on the on. I think it actually is the first the first time I've seen that. I also love this pivot from Chroma Space where the other side gets the Vivian. So they say, well, we're not going to run Barrack into that because we know how much damage it can do. Take the Terminus instead. That Siphon can block, uh, theoretically, an infinite amount of damage. And all Vivian kind of is is just that <laughs> infinite amount of damage yes. output. <laughs> and perhaps that could be a stronger matchup than for them. But you kind of heard them talking about a little bit on the desk, right? That we don't see Terminus that much outside mm -hmm. of Ice Mines in a lot of cases. Is it just into that matchup with the Vivian that you think is really what's prioritizing the pickup here? I think it's just harder, so people try to avoid it. It's a harder character to play because you have to be getting these Siphon. Re if you're not resetting your Siphon, you're dead. You have to hit all your blasts, and it's, it's not a free shot two come over to the right on the side of five randoms. The Ruck is all the way to the back line, though, for Chroma Space. That ends up getting shut down. Spunky showing he can play the Vivian pretty well, too. They've already removed Adam and the Bomb King from the equation. Ying gets one of the Terminus as well, and suddenly five randoms already starting to look to be in control. Chroma Space on full retreat, and the Vivian just laying in damage. Huge aggression from this kind of sustainy comp, too, and they're going to keep catching people out. Yeah. Spunky finding Coriol off that grip. I don't know why they wouldn't be able to. Now they're in great positioning. They've got Chroma Chroma Space stuck behind the choke point. Zarini all the way pushed up, not going to let them move in at all. 72% stacked up now and counting. They got to find some kind of way to push past and get some kind of touch onto the actual point. And this is already over. Trying to see the Terminus get just to walk his way in. The wall comes through too, shuts it all down. Five randoms get the first cap. Perfect, too, because he couldn't use Shatterfall to get over it. But even with that, actually, huge flank right now from Nepo. Nepo finds himself a double kill, trying to see how much he can take. Exentro's now falling as well. That's Adam dash in for one more. See if this Leon can find a couple more kills. Spunky, we saw at the end, put up a bunch of damage numbers last game. So has Nepo here in game number two. Almost finds the trade here. Actually does, turns around and stays alive. That's huge. And Nepo stayed alive there. Huge counter on the Enlightenment also. I thought he was done, but yep. Inu just too much peel from the rest of Chroma Space. And I, this game flipped on its head. You didn't can it? see this immediate turn of aggression, but maybe Ovum got a little too zealous. Yeah, now all of a sudden it's five randoms who are one in the back, but they found themselves a couple of picks. They've got Ruckus locked down now as well. So that'll force them back, and five randoms can finally start to get in position to make this push happen, which we should have gotten to talk about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With that, <laughs> that aggression just made it, so I, I couldn't say much of anything. I sure. wanted to make a note of Spunky's talent, because he's running suspect everyone. Unless he swapped, he's running suspect everyone, mm -hmm. which means they value the sustain and kind of counter dive potential of Vivian more than anything. When that shield goes down, the cooldown gets halved. So Vivian has that shield up way more often, and it, it's a better survival tool than you think. Well, this game feels a lot more like once one domino goes down, the whole thing falls than what we saw in game number one. So keep your eyes out for this very first pick of this fight as five random gotten stalled up at this initial choke point. Only two ultimates on their side. You wonder how much they're really willing to commit here to try and make this push actually happen. But there's the grab. Zarini pulls Ovum back and he ends up falling, but it's a two for one trade in favor of Chroma Space. They answered perfectly. Has the Vivian taken out too? Yeah, you can't trade like that on offense. You know it's, it's going to be a loss. If you, they have better spawns, it's almost always going to be better. These tanks, well, I thought this fight was over, over, but these tanks just won't die. Zerini might be able to get out here, but solid defense from Chroma. I think they're abusing the Ruckus very well by yeah. having him come over the top into the back line. Ying actually has one of the best self peels in the game, I think, with the ability to kite around illusions, and teleport between them. Very, very hard to pin down. So not that easy to dive, but I think Coral's doing a fantastic job on this high ground, just throwing damage into the back line and not letting them heal back up made this game really difficult for five randoms willing 
to go all in on the left side. Once the Termin's there to push them back. Probably one last push here for five randoms. They have made it beyond this check poke point. They do have positioning onto the actual payload. Finding the first kill on the Netbo. Second kill comes out onto, onto Nebula as well. And maybe there's a chance they can actually get this cap. It's possible. Depends on what they're willing to spend. It's 1-0. Right. This is when you can spend ultimates because even if they defend, it's not, it's going to be 3-1. They can't win the game off it. You could be willing to spend your cash for this. Serini had three pinned down. He is trying to see if he can get a grab onto one more, but is not able to find much more there. So really all that Chroma Space have to do is get them off the payload for just a little bit. The longer the overtime goes, the faster that it stacks down. Zarini moves into the back line, finds his way to the Grover to get this sustain out of the equation, but cannot complete the kill. That means the fight's going to keep raging on. Adam falls first, but Odom trade out. It's one for one so far, and they can't keep anyone actually touching. Defense successful for Chroma. So many ults had to come out on the defense, though. They, they spent the Enlightenment. They spent the King Bomb, I think, there at the last second. So not really what they wanted to do, I think, on, on defense when you want to spend that much and counter to them. But you can see they're only going to really have the, the Vivian ultimate. They're going to have the Spite from the Zin for that execute. And they don't even have really good targets, I think, for that execute, which is, I'd say, the biggest one. Hexafire can counter it. Terminus Point will just res if you don't force him to seconds. use his resurrection first. It's going to be kind of hard for them to find a target, and even if they do, it's not going to be the most health taken out of the fight that it could have been. But I think if you are five randoms, you're not feeling too bad, right? Because the first initial point fight was pretty dominant, and if you don't gift them 30 seconds at the start, maybe you actually get that cap, right? So maybe they can come back into this with that kind of mentality that, that the first time things certainly went well for them. We'll see how the fight goes. Once again, three coming over to this waterfall side for Chroma Space. It's Coreal that's already trying to start the fight off. Moves into the into the back line of the Ruckus, drops the Hexafire, and is laying into the con. Four them entirely out to retreat to the background to try and fight some kind of positioning. Chroma Space coming out to play at the beginning of this point fight. It was perfect peel by Ovum 2, siphoning on the Hexafire, but they just got flanked in the back. Excentra finds the healer, and now their only sustain is, is going to be their own. But actually, they're winning the trade a little bit. They're hiding back, but they're maintaining cap time this whole time. Spunky trying to move in and force Terminus off the point. Finally, they get it, and this should stem the bleeding for a while. But how much time can Spunky buy? Now the Ruckus knows where he is. He's shredding the sustain coming through from this Ying as well. And Spunky on a warp path. Bulka gets the kill credit, but Ovum has been taken out of this equation. Chroma Space, though, still can't get back on the actual point for more percentage. Now, finally, Ovum all the way taken out. Nepo falls as well. They did lose Adam for it. Or rather, Adam got the kill under the Zen. But this fight's starting to favor five randoms. And if they keep pushing, this could be really solid. Grover, only Blossom can really heal everyone back up. Big and Overpower pull. brings him back in. That's the king, that's the Bomb King brought back in. Finally, they take the kill and I'm happy to delay that one for a little while. So Adam taken out. And five randoms should be into yet another good spot. They catch Ovum in the air before he can even land. So Ruckus just has to try and get a body onto the actual point. But very unlike he can stall this out in any substantive ways. Five randoms should have another cap. Ninu didn't start that mid too great. He missed his spite onto a mounting ruckus, but because he missed it, he kept that 30%, recharged it, and then as that fight went on, after Obrim's res, it was literally at 99 when Obrim was using his res. It, there is no better case scenario for whiffing your ult at the start of a round for that to go. <laughs> Managed to flip it on its head because of that. You can actually see this good pressure right now from five randoms pushing up very forward. They are. And they have great ranged heals, so it doesn't matter how far forward they are from the cart. And they've got Adam pushed all the way back as well, and they will have plenty of sustain to help out. But without Spunky, that's a lot of the damage taken out. Bulka does at least get an Ovum to try and make it one for one so far. But this might slow things down for five randoms for a bit, as they've lost Ninu now as well. That's without the Zin. And as we've already said, trading when you're on the offense doesn't quite work. A double now for Adam. The Bomb King starting to say hello. Nebula can push out a bit too. So this is going to shut down five randoms for a bit. they got plenty of time saved up, though. They'll be able to make a couple tries at this. Rough illusory rift, I think, at the end there by the Ying. They didn't really need to spend that. There was already a bunch of people gone. And Tough for them to, to justify that, but this aggression now on the other side. Adam finds two right away. Adam gets another two. A lot of space being bought by this Ruckus, though, and Adam thriving in it. This is going to delay the push to five random substantially, but Xentra gets a, a critical kill onto this Leon. Adam has now fallen as well, locked in by the wall from the Inara, and that means that this Jin can get in and Ninu can start wreaking havoc. They turn it all on their head, and suddenly five randoms have only left one up. Speaking of starting wreaking havoc, Nino's been wreaking havoc all game. Yeah. He's, other than that one missile, he has been.
basically unstoppable. He, his guillotine charged up again, able to take a tank out of the fight if they want to come in. And That's huge. He could use that to just immediately get a tank off the point. Gets to the back line. Well done there by the Khan. They take Nepo out as well. That Leon was a lot of the damage that they've been worried about now. 45 seconds with the payload this close to try and push forward with five randoms. Chroma Space moving out. They recognize where the King Bomb is and shut it down early. Volka gets the kill onto Ovum. Ultimate charge up, finds big AoE damage as well. This could be the fight five randoms need, but Adam and Nepo get two critical kills on the Zerino and Spunky. They're focusing different targets though, but it doesn't matter if Nino's gonna go in and clean them all up. Nino goes in for the triple. That should be enough for five randoms to make their way in. Mickey the Quadra, you were right. He hadn't started wreaking havoc. He's been doing it all game. The Terminus trying to buy some time, but it's too late at this point. Five randoms get the push and they're up 3-1. Imagine not banning Zin. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of world do we live in? Imagine not banning Zin when Ninu's going to be on the other side with him. Imagine it. putting a headset on and undervaluing him. I got to apologize, my man. That was sick. Zin has been so impactful since the changes to him. Since he has that Yomi at base, he can focus on more of a utility talent side. And you can either run Smolder for more sustain or pull out this guillotine like most people are doing in these right. PPC games and literally just delete a tank from the game with almost no counterplay. He's invincible, he's CC immune while he's doing it. Every weakness of his ultimate otherwise is just completely mitigated. On a bit of, on a nine streak right now. Three of them are on the side of five randoms. Now ready to move in, and this is do or die. If your Chroma Space obviously can't afford to give up one more, they will have that comeback mechanic helping out a good bit though, so they won't need nearly as much time for a successful cap if they're able to grab. See how the trade has to go on point for that, though. They're going to need to win it when they are right. actually with good ruckus aggression on the side. Ninu has great positioning again, though, and one more time is able to take the Grover out of the equation early, early on. Should be able to get the retreat, too, but Ruckus wants to go hunting to try and lock him down. Still buying time somehow is the Zen. They could not complete the kill. How do you chase a Zen? He has all the defensive <laughs> cooldowns in the world. Great wall on this Hexafire. Coral has to counter this, or he's going to be dead. He has been pushed out. He has been removed. Zarini, Exentra, and Ninu all finding one. The Terminus left alone on the Point Ovum gets there, but Chroma Space got huge percentage before they lost the fight. If they can get back in, then they're certainly still in this one. It's a question of how well can Z Randoms play this defense. Huge. I, I loved how, how Ninu used his loadout there. He has hideout. We saw it earlier. He has hideout five. So Whirl reset on use of Billow, and he just used every cooldown in the world, and they just could not make the difference. They still have the point held here, but I don't know if they'll be able to make it. The point tanks are just a little bit too far away. The point is a bit too far away, and they have not made it in just yet to find the touch. Five randoms were able to get the victory and could you have guessed that it were going to end on a on a 4-1 after the way that first map went this was a steamroll especially how that first fight went i mean right. the teams were literally in each other's spawns within tw 20 seconds of each fight yes but i mean and that's what i was saying though too if you're five randoms i think even though that first that first payload push maybe didn't go the way they wanted they won that first fight so well that you had to still be confident especially with the way that they were getting such strong play to the zip yeah, for sure. And I, I think they just got a little too frustrated by Nino. I mean, you see how far Coral yeah. goes, chases Can't him chase all him the now. way, and then he ults and gets walled off, and he's like, yeah, but when this wall goes down, I might finally <laughs> kill Nino. Can we finally not get enough. rid of this guy? It just feels like it was not enough, at least in that game. So now 2-0 for five randoms. They're in a really good spot, just yeah. about to take care of this set here, right here and now. Quick break, though, and we'll be right back with you.